Yay! Oh, but it's our last time to solve a case together before we graduate. Yeah, let's see what Dr. Luke wants us to do today. Ooh. There's a note in here. Ooh. Oh, Charlotte, where to use all the skills and techniques we've ever learnt at the detective agency in order to solve our last case. Bible story today comes from the book of Acts chapter 1. Now did you know that Luke wrote the book of Acts and it's full of the stories of what the disciples did after Jesus left them which is what we're going to hear about today how Jesus left them. So listen and see if you can spot the words power, Holy Spirit and witnesses. Now Jesus had died on the cross and all the disciples and followers felt lost alone. But Jesus appeared to Mary, the women, Peter, two men on the road to Emmaus, to the disciples in the locked upper room, to show Thomas his wounds, to the fishermen and even to 500 people all over the space of 40 days. But now it was time for him to go. And one of his last encouragements to them all was this but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he led them to Bethany, lifted his hands to bless them and while he was blessing them, he was taken up into heaven in a cloud. The disciples looked at the sky and they looked and they looked. But suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? He, he will come back just as he left but for now Jesus has been taken from you to heaven. So Jesus had gone, but he did not leave the disciples alone. Because they stayed in Jerusalem, and just as Jesus said they would, they received the power of the Holy Spirit at a day called Pentecost. Holy Spirit, God's power and voice. And that power of the Holy Spirit has never gone away. I mean, it's with us all the time for the disciples then, giving them the power to heal and hear God's word and pictures to tell others of what they witnessed Jesus do. And the Holy Spirit is here now for you and me today and every day. All we have to do is invite the Holy Spirit to come. Wait and listen. Sometimes it can be tricky to work out if what we sense God is saying, if it's from God. But there are three easy ways we can do that. We can ask, is it loving, like God's character? Is it biblical and matches what we know in the Bible? And is it good? And you can always ask your adults for their help. Now we're going to spend some time now chatting and catching with God and we know that God loves to speak to us in so many ways so we're going to give time now for God to speak to us for us to catch from him however or whatever it is he's saying and remember when I say speak and saying it doesn't have to be words but God can put thoughts into our heads or ideas or maybe even daydreams or pictures there are so many ways in which we can hear God. 
So we're going to spend some time now just chatting and catching with him. And you might want to think it in your head as you're praying when you're chatting, or you might whisper it into your hands. Either way is absolutely fine. So let's get ourselves all comfy. You might want to lie down on your backs and close your eyes just to help you to really listen and to concentrate on God. So I'm going to say something now and I'd love for you to repeat it, to chat it, but not to me, to God. And then we're going to spend some time being quiet, asking God to drop his thoughts and his ideas and his daydreams into our heads. So come Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. Come and be with us as we chat and spend time with you. Tell God one thing that you love most. Tell God a game you played this week that you love to do. Tell God what your favourite animal is. Tell God one thing that made you sad this week. Tell God what you love most about him. Now we're going to spend some time asking God things and then we're going to go quiet to see what God says to us. Ask God what's his favourite animal. Ask God what game he loves to play. Ask God what he loves most about you. Ask God what makes him sad. And ask God what you can do to help him with that sad thing. Now you can continue to chat and catch with God as much as you want. Maybe now or maybe later, we can chat and catch with God any place at any time. And we know that we can hear from him in many ways too. Now, as always, sometimes it's just our imagination when we're chatting to God, or maybe it's just thoughts that pop into our head that's not from God at all. And sometimes it is God who's talking to us and we can help us to know exactly what it is by doing our three little points that we learnt about. Number one, does it sound like God? Is it like his character? Is it something that's lovely and loving and kind and caring? Well, if it is, then that sounds like God to me. Does it bring us closer to God? Does it make us like him even more and love him even more or know more about him? Well, that sounds like God too. And the third thing we could do is we can tell our friends and our families what it was that we thought or heard as we were spending time with God. And we can see if they think it also sounds like God too. So we can always keep chatting and catching with God at any place, at any time and at any moment. And we can use our little three little hints to help us to learn whether it's really from God or maybe it's just our imaginations. So let us challenge ourselves to continue to chat and catch with God and to learn to hear and listen to his voice.
graduated, we've used all the skills and tools and techniques that Dr. Luke has ever taught us. Well, yes, and there are so many ways that we can hear and discover what God is saying to us. I mean, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to speak to us in many ways. And we can use the three skills of discernment to discover if it is from God. Wow, well, we've definitely solved Z for Zoom and we can go and graduate. Come on, Charlotte, let's party. Yeah.